Well, hello everyone, it's Jordan Powell here, and today's presentation is on the importance of prayer. So this is a six-slide presentation discussing six different topics about prayer. So we will begin with the importance of prayer. Prayer is important in our walk with Jesus Christ. It's also one of the most, or it's also one of the first things that we learned to do when we first got saved. Prayer can be a helpful solution to any problem that arises, especially in the middle of hardships. As Christians, we should pray in, t in season and out of season, as prayer will always do us good. Romans 8, 26 through 28 says, Likewise, the spirits also have our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the, the God, according to his purpose. So, important things to remember. Prayer is one of the first things that we learn to do in our discipleship with Jesus Christ. There is power in prayer. Prayer can be a helpful solution to any problems that arise. We should pray in season and out of season. And we should pray daily. And now on to the second slide, which is Answers to Prayers. Jesus Christ will answer our prayers. For our prayers to be answered, we must, we must not be regarding iniquity in our hearts. As Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you are regarding sin in your heart, then the Lord will not hear you, hear your prayers, and thus the prayers will not be answered. If you repent of, of sin, then the Lord will forgive you, and then answer your prayers. You also must believe that your prayer will be answered as well, since if you pray with doubt, then the prayer won't be answered. We can't have any selfish motives, as James 4, 3 says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that he may consume it upon your, your lusts. Greedy and self-centered prayers will not be answered. For example, if you pray for a mansion, a fancy car, and a private jet, then that prayer will not be answered. Since God is not a make-a-wish genie, like what the prosperity gospel heretics present him as. When the Lord answers your prayers, then you must accept that answer even if the answer is no or wait. If the answer is no, then uh, that is for a good reason. If the Lord is telling you to wait, then he is doing so for a reason. God's timing is always better than our own timing. So, if you regard iniquity in your hearts, then the Lord will not hear. You must pray with the belief that it will be answered. Prayer should not be self-centered. Always accept the answer to your prayers that the Lord gives, even if it's no. And if the Lord tells you to wait, then wait on his timing, no matter how long it is. And now on to the third side. What is intercession? Intercession is where you continually pray for something important repeatedly, until the prayer is answered. Sometimes the Lord will tell us to wait, since he will want us to intercede for some things. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Intercessory prayer is a part of our discipleship with Jesus Christ, as sometimes we will need to intercede. Intercession can be very encouraging and is very powerful as intercession is where you pray for something important for some time. 
For example, if you spend several weeks or even months praying for an unsaved family member to come to the Lord, then that would be intercession. Um, there were a couple of times when brothers or sisters in Christ interceded for an unsaved family member to come to the Lord. And then one day, the unsaved family member came to the Lord and thus got saved. And six points on this, or six key points. Our intercession is praying for something important repeatedly. Intercession is a part of our discipleship with Jesus Christ. In life, we will need to intercede for some things. Well, we will intercede. Oh, when we intercede, we must intercede for our needs and the needs of others. Since there is power in prayer, there is power in intercession. When we say a prayer, sometimes the Lord will. Wait. So sometimes the Lord will tell us to wait. So this way, we intercede for our need. Or for our needs, or the needs of others. Now on to the fourth side. Prayer should be the first solution. When we run into problems, let alone hardships in life, we should let prayer be the first solution. In difficult situations, let alone hardships, many people often have prayer as the last thing to do, when it should be the first. Uh, Jesus Christ should always be the first person we run to when things go wrong in life. If we do this, then that shows that we have Jesus first in our life and that we are relying on him and not, and not forgetting about him. We must keep our eyes on Jesus Christ even when we are going through hardships. Life is not always going to be cupcakes and rainbows, as there will be good times and bad times. No, the good news is that in the kingdom of God, Everything will always go great as there will be no bad times there. When we have prayer as the first thing to do, when hardships come, then the Lord will help us get through their hardships. And having prayer as the first thing to do when hardships come also shows how devoted to Jesus Christ we are. I have four points on this. When problems, let alone hardships, arise, Prayer should be the first solution. Having prayer as the first solution shows that we put God first. We should keep our eyes on Jesus during both good times and bad. And having prayer as the first solution shows how devoted we are to the Lord. Now on to the fifth side. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting both play an important role in our sanctification. There may be some scenarios that we run into when we would need to pray and fast. We should pray for our every need and every need of others and not our every want. The same thing also goes for when we are fasting as well. Here you could fast from video games, social media, junk food, or even do a Daniel fast. When we are fasting, we should spend more time with the Lord more than we normally do, and we must, must fast with the right motives. Matthew six seventeen through 18 says, But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Isaiah 58 3 says, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. If you claim to fast, and if your time spent with the Lord is not changing, and you just do as you please, then you're not fasting, you're really just dieting. If you're fasting from junk food or doing a, a Daniel fast or you're really just cutting back on screens if you're fasting from video games or social media. We also shouldn't fast just to try to look holier or better. We must fast in a way that honors Jesus Christ. Fasting should be also be done 
on a regular basis, just like how we should pray on a regular basis. So, the seven key points are prayer and fasting should be in our lives, in our discipleship with Jesus Christ. You could fast from social media, junk food, video games, or even do the Daniel fast. When we fast, we should spend time with the Lord more than we normally do. When you are fasting, we can't just do as you please. Or we should not fast just to look holier or better. We must fast in a way that honors Jesus Christ. And last but not least, our prayer and fasting should be done on a regular basis. And now on to the sixth and final slide, spending time in prayer. Spending time in prayer every day is a very important habit that we need to have. Scripture tells us that we should spend time in prayer on a regular basis. Prayer is our communication with Jesus Christ. We should spend a decent amount of time in prayer and make the time to do so. For those of you who use busyness as a fake excuse just to avoid spending time in prayer, here are some facts. On work days, there are 8 hours of spare time if you don't count sleeping time. Therefore, it is easy to make the time to spend a decent amount of time in prayer during that time. On your days off, you have the whole day to pick a time to spend a decent amount of time in prayer, and that is also easy. And you must, and you must put Jesus Christ first. When we spend a decent amount of time in prayer, we should pray or intercede for our needs and the needs of others. We are using our time very well and very wisely when we do this. There will be plenty of blessings that come about as a result of spending time in prayer. So the five key points are, we should spend a decent amount of time in prayer every day. We should not use being busy as an excuse not to spend time in prayer. We should make the time to spend a decent amount of time in prayer as spare time is the whole day on days off and eight hours of work. I mean, eight hours on work days if you don't count sleeping time. When spending time in prayer, we should pray or intercede for our needs and the needs of others. And last but not least, when we spend a decent amount of time in prayer, plenty of blessings will come about. Now that is it for this presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it has blessed you. Oh well, I, I, I hope you enjoyed this presentation plus pod podcast. And have a nice thing. May the Lord be with you.